man, it feels good to be back. One last episode for the season. So let's do it and let's do it right. What is up, everybody? And welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Meet on the 50. You know what it is. It is the big game episode it is time we we're down to one game two teams only one can be champion (sighs) not the two teams that obviously we want but without further ado let's let's just let's just get into it let's let's start the show Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Meet on the 50. You know what it is. It is the big game edition. Like I said in the intro, two teams, only one winner can be crowned as the best team of the NFL in 2022 and the beginning of 2023. And it comes down to two teams and two teams only. But first, as always, joining me by my side, one of my best friends, Brandon Sullivan. Brandon, how you doing, my friend? Like I, like we said earlier, more interested in the NBA trade deadline, everything that's going on in the NBA. I've been checked out of the NFL for over a week now, just completely done. Like football season's over for me. Um, I honestly have no interest in what's about to happen on Sunday at all. This is the first time where it's like, I don't really, I don't really, it's more of who do I want to lose more? There's not a person I'm at. There's not a team I'm actively rooting for. And I can't think back in my life where I've watched a Super Bowl and I have not been rooting for a specific team, whether it be my team or with last year, your team, or, you know, I've always had a team you know, going all the way yeah. back to some yeah. of the first Super Bowls I watched with yeah. Tennessee and, and, and St. Louis, you know, I'm rooting for Tennessee, you know, and, and just so on and so forth. I've always had a team that I specifically am rooting for. And I have to say, this is a depressing <laughs> Super Bowl to have to watch because not only did your team not make it, neither did mine. So it's like, unfortunate. Um, I, I don't really care for either fan base. Um, although I do think Kansas city fans are a little bit better than Phillies. I think that's, that's not even close. Um, but not a fan of either team, not a fan of the cockiness with Philly. And then not a fan of how much, uh, you know, pa- you know, Pat Patrick Mahomes gets, yeah. you know, and it's not his fault, but it's like, no. No. The NFL is so far up his, you know what, that it's like, you you, you know, it's just, it's all you hear. So yeah. it's like, it's like the, it's like how ESPN is with LeBron. It's like, you never get a break. So definitely really depressed about this Super Bowl and having to, I'm kind of just want it to be done with so that we can look into free agency in the draft. That's what I'm most looking forward to. I like it. I like it. And yeah, we'll do, of course, our our customary, well, I guess it's going to be our traditional, obviously, draft episode, free agency episode, break all that down for you. But yeah, the big game, we're down to two teams. And yeah, I mean, quite honestly, I think this is one of the most uninteresting Super Bowls in Super Bowl history. There sure have been some kind of stinkers, kind of leading up stinkers of Super Bowls. But yeah, this one definitely, I mean, I I can definitely see why they want to have the Super Bowl in the first week of February, not the second weekend or third weekend of February, because basically the NBA trade deadline has now basically nixed any Super Bowl talk. I don't know if you guys have been following the NFL, following the NBA, but the NBA trade deadline has now basically surpassed any talk of the NFL Super Bowl, the big game. I, I have not heard one peep, essentially, about this. Obviously, you've seen some of the, the tweets, some of the videos coming out of them warming up, them getting ready, right? The Kelsey Brothers storyline, all that good stuff. They have that building up. But yeah, I mean, uh, really, it's very interesting how 
this NFL, this, or sorry, this big game, this Super Bowl, very kind of lackluster, right? It's very kind of little talked about. Obviously, it's very talked about in Kansas City and Philadelphia. But around the country, I can tell you that cares. no one really cares. Yeah, no one is really talking about it, which is <laughs> – it. It is very interesting because you do have a good matchup uh, on paper and in person, right? Patrick Mahomes versus this Philadelphia defense, Jalen Hurts, first Super Bowl, first kind of moment to really shine, kind of shined in college, then was kind of kicked down, kicked kicked away, and just kind of thrown away. Was That's able to go fault. to another I mean, school. It's his fault. I mean, when you look back, yeah. they were getting blown out at halftime. Tua came in and did what he was supposed to do. So. Yeah. You know, if you're not doing it, and it proves it. I mean, he, he brought him in. Saban did bring him in, and they won the game. They would not have won if Jalen would have kept playing. He True. played absolutely horribly. So True. it's his decision to go transfer someone else somewhere else. That's fine. It's just, you know, that that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. It is. He did get his redemption against Georgia the next year. And at the same time, uh, we'll see what happens. You know, I, I do like Jalen Hurts, obviously. Him playing for Philadelphia and those fans make it very hard to root for him. I do like Jalen Hurts, and I do like some of the Philly team. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. He is basically the golden boy in the NFL at this at this stage in the game. He is basically the new Tom Brady. He does not have the accolades of Tom Brady, but he basically is treated as the new Tom Brady in the NFL. So you got to give him his props where props are due. He did lead this team. Obviously, whether how you feel, and obviously I feel a very – particular way about this Kansas Minus City Chiefs Tyree team too. and this Tyree season. Kill. Exactly. Was he able to get back to the big game after the Tyree kill controversy in the offseason where he was just like, oh, well, you just lost your big weapon. Obviously, the Chiefs are done. I know I had thoughts that the Chiefs were going to be somewhat done. I know Brandon pretty sure had some similar, some small thoughts because I know he's more of a believer in Patrick Holmes than I am. But yeah, he had some small thoughts that Tyree kill being gone, the Chiefs may struggle and especially when... Going into the season, looking at that AFC West, obviously both of us thought it was going to be way more competitive than what it turned out to be. We both thought that Russell Wilson was going to bring some electri some electricity. He was going to, to Broncos country, let's ride. He was going to actually do that. That didn't happen. We obviously thought that Josh McDaniels getting to Las Vegas with Derek Carr, having Devontae Adams was going to be a much different result than what we saw. Yep. We also thought that the Chargers loading up on defense with Khalil Mack, J.C. Jackson, Derwin James, Joey Bosa, we thought they were going to be a serious contender this season, and it just didn't happen. They made the playoffs, but it just didn't happen. So the AFC West did not pan out how either of us thought. You got to give it to Patrick Mahomes in consistency. I, I mean, that's the game. The key is consistency. Consistency is the key. So... Good for Patrick Mahomes, good for the Kansas City Chiefs, good for Philadelphia. You know, they they rode that wave the entire season. They were the hottest team, obviously, until Jalen Hurts got hurt with that shoulder injury, which caught, kind of caused them to kind of fall off a little bit, opening up the door for kind of Dallas to seal the division and San Francisco to seal that one seed. But obviously, they were able to lock it up, and they were able to hold on. You know, regardless of how you feel, it's kind of the same thing with both teams. Regardless of how you feel, you know, consistency is the key, right? The Philadelphia Eagles were able to remain consistent on defense, and that is the key. Defense wins championships. Offense wins awards. That's the biggest saying. That's unless, you're, unless you're Patrick Mahomes. Because... Unless you're Patrick Mahomes, right? That's the, that's the saying, right? Unless you're Patrick Mahomes. And we'll see what happens. This game on Sunday, I do think it's going to be very interesting. Obviously, Brandon and I aren't really too interested in the game. Obviously, we're going to have it on because we're football fans. And I, it's the championship. You have to watch it's the championship. championship. We have to have something to talk about for our next episode, right? So, you know, it, it is what it is at this point in time. We're down to two teams. So, let's get into it. So, for the big game in Glendale, Arizona at Patrick Mahomes Arena. Sorry, at State Farm Stadium. We got the battle to see who is number one for this NFL season. We got the Kansas City Chiefs traveling down to Arizona 
to take on another team that's traveling down to Arizona from the city of brotherly love, the Philadelphia Eagles. One last time, what do you got for me? Yeah, you know, I, I got to roll with the Chiefs here. I just think experience. I think that, you know, uh, I'm going to take the best quarterback on the field and I'm going to take Patrick Mahomes. I got to go. I got to go with Pat Mahomes. He's already done it. He's been through the process. He's been in five AFC championship games. He's This is his third Super Bowl. I'm taking experience over everything. He has championship DNA. I'm going to take the, the, the proven superstar uh, Super Bowl MVP quarterback who beat my 49ers, who had one of the best defenses ever assembled to win the Super Bowl. Um, I think that him and Travis Kelsey I just, just have this connection that's just unbelievable. I think that, you know, they have some decent running backs that have been playing well this year. Um, you know, I think that the receivers have been stepping up and MBS and, uh, you know, Juju, he's been playing well yep. and uh, Pacheco, the running back. And then, you know, even McKinnon, even though as much as I don't like him, he's, he's playing well too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously you have Frank Clark and, and you, and, and you have, you know, just that, that Chris Jones and that front, you know, that, that front four, front five, front seven, they're, they they'll come at you. They'll come for your neck. So, yeah. um, I, I got to pick the, the superstar quarterback over the unproven game manager. I just don't okay. see a way okay. that Jalen Hurts wins this Super Bowl. I just don't see it. I think that it always, I think it's very rare that, in my opinion, I think it's very rare that the better quarterback does not win. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. We've seen it happen yeah. a few times. Yeah, we have. But I think it's very rare. And the only person that I think will beat Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl is Tom Brady, which is the greatest quarterback of all time. So if Pat Mahomes gets there, if it's not Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, I can't, you know, I think all the best quarterbacks are in the AFC. I think that yeah. if somebody's going to take him out, it's going to be in the AFC. I don't think it's going to yeah. be someone in the NFC. I like it. So, um, you know, it, it might have been a good thing, you know, it, down the road, you know, if I could, you know, see what would happen in a different universe. If we would have beat the Eagles, do I think we would have beat the Chiefs? No. I don't. I think we would have had a good chance, but I would have put rookie Brock Purdy up against Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Essentially the same thing for me. Jalen Hurts has never proven anything in his career. He's never won any big games. He's never won a championship. And so I have to look at it like that. They cakewalked. They played the Giants who were fraudulent, were just, were, were, were proved that they were fraudulent. I like the Giants, but they were not running with the, the Eagles in Philly. And they got handed a cupcake. I mean, they got lucky. They The 49ers didn't have a quarterback. Not only did they not have Brock Purdy, they didn't have a quarterback. Yeah. We had to run the ball. So yeah. that loss didn't even hit me that hard. Yeah. Because, you know, us getting blown out 31-7, to we had no chance. We didn't have a quarterback. So it didn't hurt like it hurt last year against the Rams where we had a chance. Yeah. We didn't have a chance on the first series. Philly yeah. has not been tested. When has Philly been tested this season? Sure. Weak schedule. Weak schedule. It's not their fault, but it's a weak schedule. That doesn't help you because you have not been tested. You played the Giants in your division, who you played twice. You get them at home. They're a decent team, but they're not a juggernaut. They're not a top five team. They're not even a top 10 team, in my opinion. They're decent, maybe top 12, top 14 team, not even top 10, okay? You have not had one test. The Chiefs did have a, have had tests this season. They've had to play in a competitive AFC West with the Chargers. Broncos have a good defense, and the Raiders. I'm just saying, yeah. divisional opponents. You've had you've been tested in these games. Also, you know you had to play the 49ers. You had to play the NFC West. And here's another thing: you had to get either way, even if it was handed to them, whatever. You still had to beat the Bengals which in my opinion was the best team this season. So with all being said, with all that being said and done, I have to roll with the Chiefs on this one. I'm very confident. I do think the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl by a touchdown. I do think they win 31-24. Okay, I like it. Yeah, you know, you said a lot of great things there. I, I definitely agree with a lot of what you said. It's going to be, I, I, yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting game. You know, it really is going to be defense versus offense. It's really going to be Patrick Mahomes. Can he outdo that Philadelphia defense? Now, like you said, has that Philadelphia defense really been tested? 
it, it's really hard to say, right? Because like you said, right? They lost against Washington. They lost against Dallas. And then they lost against, I forget who else, but they lost again. But they they were slipping. I know I know the I know the commanders was kind of midway through the season, but towards the end of the season with Jalen Hurts winning that last game, they lost with Gardner Minshew in there. Gardner Minshew was a viable quarterback. He was scoring points. That defense was giving up points. So like you said, it's gonna be very interesting. It and I do think that the Philadelphia Eagles have assembled a defense that will be able to do what they need to do. But the biggest, 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 biggest biggest key to beating the Chiefs is very very simple you limit Travis Kelsey you limit that offense and that's why the Bengals have been able to beat them three times because they limited Travis Kelsey and they forced him to go somewhere else now obviously in the playoff game we can talk about that we can talk about that another day because I'm not even going to get into it because I have still my feelings about it are basically the same about how I felt about it the last time so it really has not changed. And yeah, I mean, Patrick Mahomes and that team, regardless of how you feel, definitely are, they definitely deserve to be there. They have done what they needed to do to get the jobs done and move on, keep moving on and persevere to get to the big game. But when you look at the Eagles, one big, big, big factor is I am very interested to see how they do the QB draw because the quarterback draw is going to open up everything for the Eagles offense. So if they can get Jalen Hurts running on the move, getting him getting him rushing yards, that is going to open up everything else. This game is going to be very interesting tactically because yeah, it's very it's kind of just very like if you stop one thing, it kind of opens the door for everything else for the defense. Same thing for the Chiefs. You stop one thing, it kind of opens the door for everything else for them. So it's going to be kind of a tactician game. It's going to be very tactical. I don't think this is going to be kind of a like boom, haymaker, boom, haymaker, boom, haymaker. I think this is going to be kind of an up and down, kind of back and forth, low scoring. I don't think it's going to be no, as high Super scoring. Super Bowls as are people usually think. always more slow paced. Super I, Bowls usually are a little bit more slow paced. Exactly. I, I think this is going to be a, a lot little more methodical, right? Exactly. I, this is going to be <laughs> way more like methodically thought you out, look at tactical. Andy Reed versus, you know what I'm saying? That's another thing that. Yeah. I, want to throw in there Andy yeah. Andy Reid versus whatever the hell his name is Nick Sirianni and Nick Sirianni used to be on the Chiefs staff before before uh Andy Reid was there but Nick Sirianni came from the Chiefs so he's a product he's a product of that Chiefs organization so you got those ties there you just got all these ties you got the Kelsey brothers obviously you got Nick Sirianni's history with the Chiefs Andy you have Reed Andy Reid's history yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Andy Reid's history with the Chiefs. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, there's just so many stories here. And obviously, you can see why the NFL, the NFL wanted needed this. It. They needed it. Yeah, you can see why the NFL wanted this to be the big game, right? I mean, think, just, I can, oh my goodness. It just think about how many cutaways we're going to see. Of, oh, remember when Andy Reid was coaching the Philadelphia Eagles? Oh, here's some clips of him coaching Donovan McNabb, right? Boom, 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 boom. Oh, you remember when Nick Sirianni was coaching the, the Chiefs? Oh, here's some clips of him talking with Matt Castle. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, remember the, the Kelsey brothers? Oh, they grew up together. It's so nice, right? Here's a clip of them growing up together. Pictures of them. Kill me. The NFL got what they wanted. Cool. Awesome. There is not a snowball's chance in hell. I, I am going to pick the Chiefs. Obviously, thoughts and picks can be different, right? I'll leave that to your own, you know, unraveling there. But yeah, there is no way I'm going with the NFL's golden boy in the chiefs that just like i never went with the nfl golden boy and tom brady i'm i'm still rolling on that not rolling with the nfl well, you did when he was on the buccaneers you know uh, well that's because he was playing <laughs> that's because he was playing the potentially new nfl golden boy and and let's let's be honest the goat did what the goat does and put him right back in his place so we'll see what happens Going to be a very interesting game. I do think I do believe that. I do think it is going to be back and forth. I do think it's going to be very methodical. Like you said, I do think it's going to be very tactical. And uh, I expect, I, I, I don't think it's going to be a touchdown game. I think it's honestly going to be a field goal game. I do think it's going to come down to a field goal. And like I said, I'm not rolling with the Chiefs. It's no disrespect to the Niners or any uh, anybody on the AFC, the Bengals, anybody. I just, they're just, it just... 
It just can't happen, man. It just can't happen. I just, I can't hear an entire off season of just people, you know, there's a, there's a very vulgar way of saying it, but I just can't, I can't spend an off season of just people throwing themselves all over Patrick Mahomes and just Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes that Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes that after just basically such just I'll be honest just such a controversial way to to get there so that's why I just think like he's yeah. just yeah. to echo you know what I'll, well, I'll leave it at this to echo Christian McCaffrey I hope both teams lose yeah. I hope something happens where both teams <laughs> just lose the game with that being said, I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles to win the Super Bowl 24-21 by field goal. I do think Jake Elliott gets the job done at the end to seal the deal and win the game for the Philadelphia Eagles down there in Glendale, Arizona. And I imagine it's going to be a spectacle. Obviously, we're going to have the game on. Most likely in the background, we'll probably be doing things and things like that. You know, obviously, we got Rihanna's concert in the middle of the Super Bowl. So you got that. You got that as well. But he's got Chiefs. I got Eagles. There you go. We'll see what happens. Big game left. One more game left. And here we go. Here we go. Are we adding to a legacy or are we starting a legacy? We will find out in just two short days because that will do it for this edition of me on the 50 you know what it is is our big game picks episode and, and yeah, let's be honest brandon and i want to just want to thank you all of our viewers for taking the time for watching us all season long at this point if you've been riding with us all season long we appreciate you more than you know if you've just been joining us welcome we hope that we have done enough to earn you coming back for more because we were here this season, we were here last season, and guess what? We are going to be here next season because this is what we love to do. So just join us for the ride as always. Brandon, any last words for the people? I hope you guys, I hope the NFL, I hope everybody enjoyed you know, enjoy what you what you wanted. Okay, because none of us are. So here's the good news. Can't get any worse than this. <laughs> Can't get any worse than this. So next season, Super Bowl will be better. I already know. <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree with you. I definitely agree with you. And I guess all we can hope for is a good game. You know, if it's a blowout, that would just be even funnier than anything else. But yeah, all we can hope for is just a good game. What a hell of a season. At the end of the day, like, although, you know, the outcomes did not turn out the way we wanted. Could not be more proud for my Cincinnati Bengals. And I know he could not be more proud for his San Francisco 49ers. They will be back next year. And that's the nice thing. Our teams are competitive. Our teams compete. And our teams will not tolerate mediocrity. And that is the only thing that honestly, as either of these teams fans that we can ask for. So keep building, keep adding. We got one more game left. He took Chiefs. I took Eagles. That is going to do it for this edition of Mean on the 50. You know what it is. That is one of my best friends, Brandon Sullivan. I am Jacob Cullen, the fantasy guy. And until, until our review of the Super Bowl, I hope everybody enjoys. But until then, stay safe, be safe, have fun. And all we can hope for is a good game because Brandon and Jake, we're out.